Well, good morning and welcome to Noah's Window. If you were with us Monday through Thursday, you know, we were talking about the four compromises that Pharaoh offered Moses. But something else is going on, and Mary Alice and I were discussing that this morning. You may know that Mary Alice is leading a class each month called Book by Book. And this month, in fact, the, the class is coming up this Wednesday evening. This month, the book is Mark. And of course, it's the second of the four Gospels. So while we were reading the book of Exodus, something came up that we're looking at also as Mary Alice gets ready to present on Mark. And that is this idea of the Sabbath. And Mary Alice, I want us to talk about the Sabbath first and then pull out a little bit and look at it in the sense of all of God's commands. Mm -hmm. Because we read something this morning in the book of Exodus chapter 16, where the Bible says, and this is God speaking, he said, how long will these people refuse to obey my commands and instructions? They must realize that the Sabbath is the Lord's gift to you. Mm -hmm. Of course, in the Gospel of Mark, the Pharisees distorted all this, and they tried to make the Sabbath about keeping rules. And it, and it was a rule that God had, but they failed to understand that God's rule of the Sabbath was a gift to them. Isn't that correct? It is, and what a, what a shame to... Um, take something that was truly a gift and turn it into a burden and make it um, uh, kind of something that you would resent and yet it's a gift and it just it just seems it just seems like it doesn't make sense to be given such a special gift and for them to uh, ruin it essentially with well, their own rules the I, traditions yeah I, I do think that that's one of the real misconceptions that our world has about God is they look at his rules as if somehow God is trying to spoil our fun, when in reality he's trying to give us a, a life that not only glorifies him, but a life that also is for our own good. I mean, don't you ever think about sometimes what this world might be like if people kept their promises, mm -hmm. if, if people treated each other the way they would like mm -hmm. to be treated? You know, what if people respected God's boundaries of human sexuality I mean and, and other things right I mean right right those are all really gifts that help us to have the most abundant life we can have uh, but as we've been talking about because you're getting ready to go here on the weekend but Satan always wants to make us think that what God has given us is God taking from us because Satan always takes he does well the thief comes to steal kill right. and destroy right. Jesus said those are the three things he comes for so there are no other categories. So his deception is to say, oh, it's God trying to take something away from you. God's trying to withhold something from you. But really, he's the one that's trying to take away our joy and all the blessings that God has offered us, gifted to us. Yeah. And it just strikes me that even in the old co covenant, people failed to understand that God's laws were gifts. And definitely they, under they, they failed to understand it. At least the Pharisees failed to understand it in the new covenant because they tried to take God's gift of the sabbath and then turn it into a heavy burden here's here okay so this, this is the other thing if you read in the old testament when the sabbath is described it's a day of complete rest like i'm going to give you a day <laughs> to have complete rest and what do the pharisees do they say on this day you can't do this you can't do this and you can't do this and you can't do this and you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this. most it was like what is it, like 600 different rules they had yeah it and was yeah. it was you can't turn this direction i mean it, it was ridiculous and to take I mean, here's the thing, How, you know, at our stage in life, if somebody said to you, you have a day every week where you can completely rest <laughs> and you don't have to do anything. In fact, you're not allowed to do anything. At that point, I'm going to say, I'm taking that. I will, I will take that. But he's totally twisted it around. The Pharisees have totally twisted it around. And Satan's behind that, of course. Yeah, of course. And it's just like so many other things that we look at where God gives instructions about how to live and instead of recognizing that those instructions are for our good, for our, uh, our blessing. It's so easy for Satan to distort that in, in the old nature that we have and make us believe that God's trying to spoil our fun. I can't help but think about Psalm 119. We did a Noah's wind on that not that long ago where, it, and of course Psalm 119 is the longest chapter of your Bible. I think there are 176 verses and every one of those verses, I think with maybe one exception, has something to say about the word of God. And, and what, what I want to get to is David is always saying, I love your law. I mm -hmm. love your instructions. Mm -hmm. You know, your instructions have been good for me. It was good for me to learn your instructions. And I think it's important for all of us to recognize that those rules that God has in our lives, 
they're not to spoil our fun, but they're to bring our joy. That's right, the gift. Don't let, don't let Satan ruin such a wonderful gift that God has provided. And, and, and of course, and I should say this, and I'm gonna put you on the spot because I get a lot of questions about the Sabbath mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of confusion on what it is and how it relates to us today. Can you just talk about that for just a minute? Well, we're not under the law. We're not under the Mosaic right. law. So consequently, it's not a law like was, that was part of the old covenant where there were certain things that had to be observed during the Sabbath. Um, and we don't have that. And I, I know that my, my Jewish friends still celebrate the Sabbath. I remember when I was asked to speak, uh, I was asked to bring the message for a rabbi friend of mine over at synagogue. Mm -hmm. Uh, that service could not begin until 12, 15. So the Sabbath had to be over. I remember that week, uh, <laughs> we had to play the sermon for the 11, 15 audience. You know, it had to be, mm -hmm. the recording had to be played because I was on my way to the synagogue to speak at the memorial service for my rabbi friend. Well, we're not under the old covenant. The Bible makes that clear in the book of Romans. But I do believe there's wisdom in having a day of rest. Day of and by the I, way, what day of the week is the Sabbath? Well, the Sabbath was Saturday. Okay. And in fact, the, the way the Jews celebrate it, and, and I don't want to get off in the weeds here, but the way the Jews celebrate it, the day actually began at six o'clock the night before. Mm -hmm. And um, so they would begin the Sabbath, you know, on Friday evening. We saw that when we were in, in Israel, in yeah. Israel, and in fact, everything all the restaurants were closed. <laughs> but boy, when that Sabbath ended, boom! Everything it's, it's was a big celebration. Was, well, I think that was the biggest. Well, and just I real ever quick, saw. because I get this question a lot. So, why do we worship on Sunday? Why is that our day? Of well, the, the Bible talks about worshiping on the Lord's Day in the New mm -hmm. Testament, and we sync up with the day of the resurrection. Uh, and, and of course, our day of worship is different from um, from the Old Testament Sabbath in that regard. Now, of course, somebody could say, well, we have uh, Saturday services, and, and indeed we do. I used to joke about this because our Saturday service started at six o'clock, and I used to say, well, <laughs> the way the Jews looked at it, the Sunday starts at Saturday, six, mm -hmm. six o'clock. Yes, but, but having six. said that, that was the that was the day of worship for God's people, you know. But it, it wasn't it, some it wasn't something necessarily that was mandated right. in that fashion, you know. Uh, in the Book of Romans, Paul says one person regards a day one way, another person regards a day a different way. But he said, whatever a person does, let that person mm -hmm. be fully persuaded in their own heart. Okay. I do know that there are some there are some even. Christian churches that really get freaky on this thing about the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. They make yes. it a doctrine, which is, as we're discussing, it's the last thing God ever intended. Exactly. So there can be New Testament versions, uh, I mean, uh, modern versions of some of the New Testament problems. They, they, they keep going the same uh, way. Well, I mean, you see this in the, in the first century, especially when you look at, at books like Galatians and Romans, where there was this transition from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant that was still being worked through. And there were people who accepted Christ, but they said, oh no, we still have to keep the law. And, and that mm -hmm. gave Paul a huge headache, you know, that we keep reading about. Well, there are a couple things on Marianas in my calendar that we would like to share with you before we leave today. Of course, uh, it's Friday and, and we're just a few hours away from the Saturday service, which begins tomorrow night at four o'clock and then the Sunday services. This is the last weekend of the I Wish I Could blank series. It's the most important talk by far. And I got to tell you, I, I wasn't sure whether I should start with this talk or end with this talk because I knew it was the most important. But in time and prayer and study, I became convinced I need to give you the tools first and then give you the key to the whole series. So it's just huge. And I won't take any more time other than just to say, if there was only one message in the I Wish I Could series that you need to see, you need to see this one. So looking forward to seeing you at New Spring. I know some of you can't be there physically, but please check the message out online. And Mary Alice, this coming Wednesday, you have book by book, and it's the book of Mark. Mark, yes. Well, can you say a little bit about <laughs> <laughs> what's going to happen? Um, and... Well, um, there it's it's um, we're going to be going through the book of Mark. And the idea here is to focus on one book of the Bible every month. And so we uh, we kind of set it up and give out some uh, you know some guidance. Some we have some handouts, and then everybody that's in the group will be working on that for the month. And then as we come back this month, we'll be talking a little bit about Matthew, which we've done during the uh, month of January, and then we'll be introducing the book of Mark. So. Well, I know I sound like a proud husband, and I am, mm -hmm. but 
this lady studies. Uh, in fact, so many times she'll be up at two or three o'clock in the morning and, and I, I, she'll have her Bible out and her pad and, and she's writing and studying. I just think this is one of the greatest opportunities. And I've really encouraged Mary Alice to do this because she has a passion and a gift for not just teaching the Bible, but by empowering people to study for themselves and to mine these beautiful nuggets out of God's word. And I think she just has an extraordinary gift for this. And so I'm excited about that. Well, that's coming up. Well, Mary Alice, we need prayer. Uh, as we talked about on first Wednesday, these are difficult days. We need prayer and we need clarity in our hearts and minds. I, when I look at the story of the Old Testament, the Israelites leaving Egypt and going into the promised land. So many times they were fuzzy in their thinking. And then we see the same thing happening in the New Testament and in our era where people want to follow God, but they get very fuzzy and in areas where they really need clarity. So let's pray today that God will give us clarity to see the truth as it really is. And going back to where we started today, seeing the commands of God as our best friends, mm -hmm. you know, pray for us today, please. Absolutely. Let's pray. Well, Father, thank you for loving us enough that you provided your word so that we could uh, get to know you and so you could show us how to live. And we know that it's your desire because you've told us it's your desire for us to live an abundant life, a, a life with joy and peace and purpose and all those things. And Father, thank you for your great love for us. And I pray that you um, keep the evil one away, all of his deception when he wants to lie to us and tell us that um, what you're bringing to us are, are burdens when in, in fact what you're bringing to us are gifts. Help us to recognize that Father and help us to just try to grasp how much you truly love us, each and every one of us, not just corporately but individually because you know each of us. In fact you've told us you, you know us better than we know ourselves and Father we just want to come to you and I just pray today for everyone who's watching or listening to Noah's Window that you would be very present in their life today, that they would be aware of your presence, that they would fill your arms of love around them and they would know that even in difficult days that you uh, love them more than they can imagine and that you have promised to guide us through these days and i just pray for each and every one that's struggling with a, a need today a challenge a, a difficulty i just pray that you'd intervene and bring the answers that only you can bring and we'll give you all the glory and the praise and um, we'll thank you for all these things and ask all these things in jesus name amen amen well, thanks for joining us today on Noah's Window. Hey, something that you might want to keep in your back pocket. It won't be long before we'll be at our 500th episode. We're planning something really cool for the taping of that 500th episode. We'd love for you to be part of it. So just keep watching our Noah's Window uh, Facebook page and, and we'll be sharing with you uh, just some of the cool things that we're, we're planning. And we'll give you the date pretty soon. And we want you to be part of that for those of you who've been with us on Noah's Window. Well, until Monday, we pray you have a wonderful weekend, and we pray the part of that weekend is with us at New Spring Church.